Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. And right now, we need to talk about in his footsteps. Andre walked in front of a long row of T-72s as he held an notepad, inspecting each tank with care for so far. They look good. Whoever designed them must have been a genius, Andre thought. He checked off another tank. This one was looking great, too. Then he heard shuffling footsteps, and he turned back to see a much older man walking with a cane. The older man was also inspecting the tanks. Wait a minute. Andre thought he slowly approached him. Excuse me, but I don't think you have the clearance to be here. The older man turned to Andre and smiled. Oh, can, can a veteran look at the tanks that will be driven by the young? Andre notices a Yubilanya medal and nods. My apologies, I didn't know. The veteran tapped on one of the tanks with his cane and grinned. You know, if I had one of these during the war against some, uh, them German boys, we would have made it to Berlin within weeks. Andre chuckled. Well, I'm sure we'll be in Moscow in no time. We made the right preparations and Russia's breathing once again. Do everything you can to keep it breathing. And right now, I'm checking around for the tanks. We could definitely use more tanks, so I'm going to take off, like, actually... 10 here because we have more than enough already 5.7 a day versus 14 a day it's still not enough especially since we have no manpower and i want to convert some more of these divisions to tanks before we actually start heading out just because well we do have seven here and that's a, a great amount of armor like holy crap we got a good a great amount of sp artillery so you can kind of see why i want to maybe convert our, some of these divisions over to actual like tank divisions and such but a letter to the reich to the deranged leadership of the greater German Reich, your country once built on the split blood of so many innocents and the enslavement of millions is a disgrace to human civilization. The country that your people are conditioned to so adore and to love is a sorry excuse for a civilized state, and yet you dismiss such accusations, pinning the various failures of your nation on the subhumans you have pledged to and failed to exterminate. Your state, the supposed beacon of life, will a non-existent master... <clears throat> Race is merely a dirty chessboard, another battlefield for the slaves, masters, butchers, and puppeteers to consolidate power while the average German toils every day. How can a country created to provide a utopia for its master dude group not even be capable of fulfilling such a basic goal? Why should it continue to exist? The citizens of Russia have not forgotten the many injustices our people have had to endure for the last three decades. Our country was once a melting pot of cultures and people from Europe to Asia that was brutally crushed by your hordes, all for the prospective dream of living space that was never truly, fully, truly realized. Soon you shall face the long-awaited consequence of the abomination you have created. The torture of Eastern Europe cry for justice, and justice will come. Without warmth, the president of the Russian Federation, Vasily Shukshin. After 20 years, the Russian bear roars proudly once again. Mo mobilize the Federation. Um, support will go down. We lose a lot more uh, civilian factory construction speed, but it is a necessary evil. And we need a lot more output anyways. To defeat the menace, we the Nazi menace, of course, we must complete the Federation's transition to a war economy. Factories and key industrial sectors will be nationalized and all production reorganized for the conflict against the Nazi superpower. The entire Russian economy will be transformed from simple tools and products to weapons of total warfare, which will be necessary to liberate the Muscovite people from the chains of oppression. We don't have enough tanks yet. God dang it. A blitzkrieg of our own. When the Germans invaded the Union, the so Soviet Union, in 41, they overwhelmed the unprepared Red Army with their massive assault of tanks, planes, and mechanized divisions, using the Blitzkrieg to overwhelm Belarus and Ukraine and seize our sacred Moscow, but they caught us off guard, but not this time. This time, we will be the all-Russian army that overruns the Wehrmacht with such speed and ferocity that we will have the Wehrmacht fleeing west in panic and fear that the Russian army had once known. Which actually be really good for us. We get plenty of 20% more attack for half a year. God dang. That's awesome. Oh, we actually have some actual tank divisions. Oh, look at that. Nice. Still have no manpower, but whatever. We literally have no manpower. Holy crap. Must have just made more divisions then. Mm, nice. Uh, what else can we do here? Anything here yet? Yes. Just a little bit ahead of time, but that's okay. Over the radar horizon stuff. The Federation marches to war throughout Siberia, across the Ural Mountains, from one bank of the Blue Volga to the other. The Federation is awakening like a giant, awoken from a thousand years of slumber. It stirs fitfully and rises to its enormous, its enormous feet with the strength of a mountain. In Golking, Chelyabinsk, Samara, and Yekaterinburg, great forges of heat are heated by the ignition of Russian hopes and dreams. The people of those cities work day and night, churning out hundreds if not thousands of tanks ready to charge into Saxony. In Akutsk and Omsk, men, young men kiss their sweethearts or their wives goodbye. They give of themselves to fulfill the duty to the nation and their loved ones, to build a world where the families can be free and to men in Novosibirsk. Veterans of air warfare and greenbacks alike take to the skies, flying practice sorties or the snowy plains of Siberia. From above, it seems all so very small. In Kamchatka and Arkhangelsk, Veterans of the Red Navy set aside their politics to battle for the liberation of millions. Their only wish is that they could have won at a Bukharin. They weep for those souls lost in the Second World War and every man, woman, and child burned by the white-hot rod of slavery since those dark days began. And the Nudinsk and Kazan, men, of not, uh, men not of Russia, prepare to take up arms. Their sacrifices will be remembered as the greatest of all in the decades to come.
In Ukraine, in the Caucasus Mountains, old men dig up rivals long buried. Their units, their brothers, have been decimated four times over. The old men don't expect to live to the end uh, of the Second West Russian War, but their roar of defiance will shake Atlas's weary, weary arms. <clears throat> in Ukraine, in the Caucasus. Oh, I already read that one. In the Presidential Palace, President Shukshin will wait patiently. His eyes to the West. Soon, the Federation will be going to war once more, and the people will be ready for the struggle ahead. We should not enter Aldegator's Hall with words of fear upon our lips. Actually, since we're here, now it's time to spend more money. Hopefully, we can mobilize a couple more guys because we definitely need more manpower. But for the liberation of all Russians, after years of suffering and humiliation in the hands of the Nazi Reich, the Federation is ready to step forward and westward and liberate the occupied lands under the domination of the fascist state. It is time to do what we promised to all of our people for the liberation of all Russians. Oh, basically, oh, just in time, yes, please. So that's good. Um, let's come back over here, though. I've got about this one. God dang it. Arm um, upgrades, yes, please. Actually, so now, after we got a lot, quite a few other upgrades, this is our normal tanks. <coughs> 185, a little less than 1500. You guys are 1800, so that's quite a bit of improvement now. And 178 is pretty good. The breakthrough 2200 is not as good as 3300, but the defense is 800 here, while the defense here is a little more than 800. 11 entrenchment, 11 entrenchment. Piercing is 340 some. That's almost 300 too. So, so the plan. When the Wehrmacht stormed France and later Russia, they changed warfare forever with a revolutionary doctrine, the name of which is enough to instill fear and flashbacks to even the most hardened of veterans, the Blitzkrieg. The goal is quite simple advance into enemy territory as fast as possible. Thanks to another armored vehicle stormed the border in the beginning. Hours of the war, followed by air raids on infrastructure and military targets before mobilized infantry rushed into, into the clean up the mess. General Novikov explained his eyes on the war map. What about our industries? Can they keep up with these demands? Shukshin asked, looking over to Kachenko. Our industrial capacity has grown tremendously in recent years. I've been in contact with the heads of Phoenix and Sibir. They told me their industries are up to the task, Mikhail explained. Vasily glanced over to Pokrishkin. The avia had a reserved expression on his face, thinking deeply to himself. Did you have anything to add, Alexandra? Shukshin asked, turning to his friend. We're really doing this, he muttered, walking over to the war map. I fear for the future, Vasily. I'm not sure what the outcome of all this will be, but I've learned to put my faith in you, and of course, I don't doubt the abilities of General Novikov and Kochenko. I like our odds. Uh, <clears throat> Vasily, I think we've got a chance this time to turn things around. Alexander explained, turning back to the three men in the room. The rider smiled, placing a hand on the aviator's shoulder. Victory will be ours, old friend, I promise. Go and get a lot of organization for the liberation of all Russians. Here we go. I hope we have enough fuel, because we have planes. We've got actually quite a few planes. Not a, not a ton, but like, I wish we had more, but whatever. Um, here. Who needed uh, manpower, right? Don't Just don't think there's going to be enough planes, though. I wish we had more manpower, too. Like, we're still mobilizing more, but it's still not going to be enough. I'm not, like, this tank division, hopefully it just gets absolutely demolished. Oh, uh, there it is. Uh, that's like a 20 combo tank division, probably. Um, that's the case. We need to save some manpower. No, we don't even make any more. That's fine. Save the tanks. We need to save the tanks. And here we go, my friends. Oh, do we have a new focus tree? Oh, yeah. No turning back now. The time has finally come. From our humble beginnings as a breakaway of the Central Siberian Republic to the reunification of Russia all, has all at this moment. We are now at war with Germany. The road ahead will be costly and many lives will be lost, but in the end we will achieve what President Shukshin has sought from the moment he took office. The liberation of all Russians from tyranny. This may very well be Russia's last war. We risk everything we hold dear to our hearts in this coming conflict. Let us battle our old foe one last time and give them a fight they'll remember. There's a lot of green so far, which is very reassuring. One last war. They've already lost 15,000. Nice. <clears throat> Vasily saw Erd longingly at the row of trees in front of him. Some promo urged within him wanted to just run in there and reclaim Russia single-handedly, although he hadn't seen Russia. Neither had his parents either, but he was willing to make sure his generation would not grow up in some backwater town in Siberia. He wanted to save the Russian people and the Russian homeland to reclaim what was stolen from them by the fascist powers that be. Thinking about all... Look at that, wow. Thinking about all he had come from, living in Novosibirsk, he thought of the fledgling technocratic government, shooting into the stars by controlling the anarchy around it and securing its far eastern possessions. The air was now tense and thick with a slight splattering of rain slicking down off his boots and coating the grass in a soft dew. <coughs> the border itself didn't seem imposing. It was pathetic even. In the distance, there was a small outpost one could see with binoculars, but other than that, it was no wonder so many could get in and out so easily. Vasily thought of maybe just putting a foot over the border in a childlike notion, however, it was Dash as a stronger voice inside him drove him back. Leaning on a tree, he looked down at his watch, 1456, it read on his arm. The town was near, the fate of Russia hung deep upon him. The countless generations gained or lost by this would be insurmountable. The history of the world would be changed, as the idea of the hegemony over Europe would soon be able to be slowly taken apart. It's now or never. Start a nuclear war? Well, I'm going to wait on that one. Forward Russia. 
The finest war machines blaze into Germany, German holdings, ready to liberate Muscovy. In airfields all around West Russia, plane after plane takes off, ready to sacrifice their lives to defend the brave ones fighting the menace on foot in Arkhangelsk. The Russian fleet still sets sail, getting ready to defend our hard-won Arctic holdings. Millions march with strict precision, rifles aimed forward, killing all who stand in their way, of course. Every tank needs its fuel. That's why ramping up conscription or conscription is the only option if we want to keep enough men in our ranks of our already massive army. More able-bodied men shall serve and all Russian army will grow even stronger. Onward. So now we get four-year draft, which game seems kind of weird. We get four Russia, which is pretty nice. Oh, and since we're here anyways, let's make sure that there's enough support for us, so... It's nice, but... Hopefully we do okay here. The Federation invades on Ice Pact. For the liberation of all of Russia. This is actually really cool. Really, really awesome. Cool. The strong in this world will know everything. Shame and torment, self-judgment, and the joy of enemies. Oh, we're not doing great there, are we? That sucks. Nice. So completely encircled here. And destroyed. Beautiful. Hope we can keep it up, because we don't have a lot of manpower, but that's okay. Start a nuclear war? Yeah, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Because they will be naval invading, so... Well, to turn our tanks back up northward, that's alright. Forward Russia, more manpower, please. And Brave Sons of Russia, rally the people. Ooh, I like that a lot. I want to do this one. Rally the people. We must remind our population what we are fighting for. We fight for the Muscovites who have been displaced from their homes to make way for settlers and being treated as subhumans in their own land. We fight for the Caucasians who have long endured segregation and oppression at the hands of the Reich. We fight for the Ukrainians whose lands have been reduced to nothing more than farmland for the Reich. We fight for the natives of Austin who watched on helplessly as their homelands are colonized by their oppressors. We fight for the liberation of Eastern Europe, no matter the cost. Losses. Quarter million so far. We've lost 2,000. But we're going to encounter more and more difficult, uh, you know, people ahead. Nice. Let those tanks storm the land. If we can take the, uh, caucuses, that'd be great. Did you guys actually win here? I kind of doubt it. Never mind, we did. 400,000 have died. Not enough. Literally not enough yet. Wow. Actually, you know what? Getting Using this type of armor, I'm kind of liking it. It's really causing them a lot of couches, which I love, 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 love. Oh, would you look at that? Overran. Yeah. I think it was a smart thing to do. Thank you for the recommendation, whoever recommended that. Actually using, like, tanks and SP artillery. A lot of fun. Not gonna lie, a lot of fun. Beautiful. Get Baku! Get Baku! This is going so fast! 600,000 have died. We've lost only 10,000 so far. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. As much as I want to take Moscow, come on, can we encircle them? I would love to encircle these guys. Oh, we got we got them encircled. Oh, oh, we've already made one of them capitulate. Oh, it's so fun. Oh my goodness. Over eight hundred thousand have now perished in, in this war. Moscow, come on, let's get Moscow. Actually, we're just sitting there. We're literally just standing there. What the heck? We got Moscow! Yay! Moscow is back. The liberation of Moscow. Moscow is behind us. Over a million would probably die by now, right? The Germans offer Western Russia. After weeks of intense fighting across Eastern Europe, the GGRs offered us a solution to end the conflict. We in exchange for peace between our nations. The Germans have offered us the Russian majority lands of Muscovy. The government is divided on whether we should continue our war against the Reich and end the conflict or while we maintain the advantage over Germany. We're going to keep on going. My apologies about that, but I did want to tab over and see to see what Germany's up to. And honestly, I can't really blame Bormann for looking like that, especially even though he's got a lot of manpower and divisions left. He's already lost over half a million German lives, so that's pretty bad for him. I and mean, we're doing pretty darn well still, so... Overall, we're doing pretty darn well. We've already taken out the Crimea. We've taken out all the Caucasus. Like, that is... At least, in my opinion, that's extraordinarily awesome. So, but we're just keep moving on in. Hope we're doing a good old job here. Trying to push, 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 push. Literally overrunning enemy divisions like crazy. And hopefully being able to get here pretty darn quickly. Oh, look at that. More divisions encircled and destroyed. Oh, it's so beautiful. They've only lost now... We were just over half... Like, 560,000. We're literally over, oh, well, almost a million now. 
And we got all the equipment too. Oh my gosh. Oh my yes. Oh, this is so good. So good. Just go, 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 go. Nice. Oh, what the heck? Look at the tanks. Holy crap, the Germans Oscar Muscovy. With Petrograd and Volgograd back in Russian hands, the Germans have approached our government once more with another offer of peace. They are prepared to hand over all of Muscovy in exchange for peace between the Russian Federation and the GGR. Once more, the government is divided, but much of our high command feel we can continue our great advance towards Hot of the Reich and raise a banner of the Milan or the ruins of the Volkshalle. Onwards to Germania. This might be going a bit too far, but I mean, if we were literally in Bucharest, even though we might get caught, like, bruh. All right, so let's go and reform the front line here, because it's, it's looking pretty bad. Uh, yeah, do that. There you go. That's going to be pretty darn good. I want you guys to reform yourself. We might lose a few tanks here and there, but you know what? That's just that sacrifice worth making. Ukraine's got to die. The Reich's going to start Ukraine, that is. Cool. And just go on in if you can. All right. And we did do last, say last time we will rally the people, of course. But now we will go ahead and plead to free Europe. Sure. Brothers and sisters of Europe, the struggle for the liberation of our sacred continent is at hand. As the All-Russian Army bravely marches westward to face the Wehrmacht, we all call upon all free peoples of Europe to support our great struggle against the Reich by any means they can. Only when free Europe is united together as one, we can free our continent from Nazi repression and ensure that the future of this ancient land will be one in freedom and prosperity for not only our children, but our, for our children's children as well. Also, I completely forgot about this too. Completely forgot. Cool. And you guys will come down here to Kiev. Nice. Uh, they offer us Caucasia. Well, that one was the first one capitulate, so. As the soldiers dig even deeper into the dark heart of the Reich, the Teutons have approached the government once again. This time, they offer the prize Reich's Commissary uh, in the port city of Rostov in exchange for peace. Our government uh, has signaled the support for the deal, calling for Vasily Shukshin to accept peace with Germany, but some generals in our staff, vengeance not yet fulfilled, have proposed we continue our advance and push for Austria and Ukraine. A couple comments include, when are we going to play as fascist Magadan? That's a good comment. I'm not sure when, but sometime soon, hopefully. What templates are we using? I forgot about that one. So, we're using Garys, so like, literally just garrisons. Uh, which, actually, I should probably edit these a little bit more. Logistics are fine, but really we should have military police here, which I forgot to get to. So, honestly, if we do this, it's not going to hurt that much. If we get rid of this too. All I care about is suppression here for this statistic, so. We save uh, equipment out that way, so. Um, we're using 40 combo with guys here, which we do have APCs. Are we, are we out of tanks? We actually we actually have a surplus of tanks. I thought we'd be out of tanks by now. We have quite a few APCs, so actually we can convert one more over if we really wanted to. It's fine with us. It gives a little bit more armor as well. It's awesome. Tanks are fine. Um, these we have normal tank divisions, which are just five APCs, 15 main battle tanks, with a bunch of other stuff right here. We also have these other divisions, which I'm just going to get rid of right now. Our infantry divisions are for a combo with, which is standard, what was it, 14 4, 14 infantry battalions, 4 artillery battalions. Oh, I forgot to throw in stuff. Oh, man, I wish we could throw more tanks here. Oh, actually, we could. Gives us way more armor. Oh, it's going to be a bad idea to do that, but whatever. Equipment capture ratio. Screw it, why not? And then we have tanks with SP artillery, which is 5 APCs. Um, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Five APCs, nine main battle tanks, and four SP artillery, which are three combo with each, which does give us 224 soft attack each compared to basically 84. So, yeah, these definitely give you a lot more soft attack, so. Into the fire. What are you waiting for? Christmas Major Chernyshev scream. Let's get this moving. Go, go, go. Frantically, Nikolai tried to keep up with the rest of his unit. Screaming clouds of artillery fire blotted out the sun and crashed upon the earth, drumming and drumming. Beneath his boots, the muddy soil shifted and writhed. As an angry rubble, rumble of tanks roared all around him, quickly raising his rifle, Nikolai put another German flat on his back with a sharp crack. Kolya, the Major howled from up ahead. The effing Kamchatkins will be Moscow before you. Move your booty. Rolling towards them, Nikolai yet saw another growing row of panzers, infantrymen, crawling in their furious shadows like ants. Nikolai's got flipped and squealed as they approached, but he didn't have time to rush. His unit had dropped flat on their stomachs as the anti-tank squad loaded their arms. As he stumbled forward, a hand reached up and seized Nikolai's arm, pulling him to the ground. Kolya, his friend, hissed. Keep down, can't you see the Germans? Not Mishia, aye. Nikolai was interrupted by the sudden thunder of a tank beside him that seemed to burst out of the ground itself. Nikolai screamed and rolled over, fumbling uselessly with his rifle. It was only one he saw. A two-legged eagle painted on the side and heard Misha laughing that he realized it was one of theirs. Up, lads, Major Chenishev up to his feet as the Russian tanks barreled down on either side of him. Let's kill some crowds forward. With his blood running so hot it felt like fire, Nikolai ran and screamed with his comrades, Ura, 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 above him. He suddenly felt the rippling stream of jet fighters above him as the Russian falcons darted in between the rumble 
a rumbling flock of German bombers. Rows of things crashed into one another like a wave, smoke and flames leaping from the turrets. As the German ants began appearing from behind the hulking panzers, a storm of Russian gunfire was unleashed. Everything faded from Nikolai's mind, and all that he could focus on was making sure his next step was not his last. The battle could have raged for an hour or an eternity. Nikolai didn't know. With every step, Moscow draws nearer to the eyes of the Russian people. What do you mean? We, we really take Moscow. Moscow's ours. Good. Oh, I didn't tell you guys to go. Go ahead. Keep engaging them. Oh, these guys are cut off. Maybe. Maybe not. Oh! Oh, we got Ukraine too. Nice. Very good. And we got the equipment as well. We literally cut these guys off, which is awesome. Okay, so these guys need to die. Good. Good. Oh, encircled. I love it. I'm not really doing much with it, though, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Keep these guys in place for now. They're going to try to break through, but we can't let them. Start a nuclear war? Whoa, we're pretty good. Nice. Yeah, look at all those divisions circled. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. Two million. Oh my gosh. We've only taken 33,000 casualties ourselves. We are pushing straight into basically the Reich at this point. We've abandoned this area of Bucharest, which I'm surprised they have not tried to get back, but okay. We're just bleeding into them. Like, this is ridiculously easy. I am definitely going to be using some more heavy SB artillery in the future. Holy crap. I didn't realize how good these were. Yeah, you guys were right. Try and use them out. Debt is but a number when we're literally approaching Krakow right now. Well, there goes... Oh, there goes Romania. Holy smokes. Three million dead. Not sure if we'll actually be able to make it to Germania. I mean, we could try. I mean, we're doing so well. I don't think the mod developers realized, like... I right, guess maybe they did. But, like, <coughs> how fast we could push in. And once it... Because this is, like, unique content for Shukshin, so... Usually, at the time of this recording, when I do another modifier, or unifier, I should say, it's not this easy. It's definitely not this easy. Go, go, go. Oh, there goes Slovakia. Jesus Christ. We can't even get to the focus tree, the ultimate demand. Sudden and alarming news comes from enemy force. Apparently, in response to the course of war, they've sent us an ultimatum. Cease fighting immediately, or be destroyed with nuclear weapons. However, we cannot be sure how serious they are in terms of their threat. We can either attempt to end this conflict and make peace with our foes, or call their bluff entirely. The choice is up to you. Uh... We need to get there now, because I want to get com demanded complete German surrender, because we, we need Livlin. Uh. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm not. Uh. I guess we'll do that one, maybe? Do we get live? We should be able to get Livlin, right? What? 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 The Treaty of Riga. Um, oh, which was the right one here? I hope this doesn't change. Uh, we'll see. The German foreign minister entered the manor, referred to as the House of Black Heads by local Latvians. He had been sent there by the Fuhrer to do the impossible job of negotiating a fair peace deal for the Reich, a task who was already sure he would be impossible. He kept a scowl on his face, his face glistening with sweat as the rather unfriendly looking Russian soldiers escorted him to a study. Waiting patiently inside the room was none other than the Federation's most feared general, Alexander Novikov himself. He finally made it to German. The field marshal spat out the last word, a snarl on his face, his bright blue eyes glaring daggers at the foreign minister, akin to that of a wolf stalking its prey. I'm sorry, Slav, the foreign minister replied, hate in his quivery, laughably high-pitched voice, drawing out the final syllable in an attempt to assert an aura of dominance over the smirking Russian who towered over him a meter away. I don't like wasting my time with subhumans. Very well, then, the general chortled, gesturing to the papers laid out on the table in the middle of the room rather elaborately. Would you, Untem Ubermensch, kindly send the terms of surrender? The war has not gone well for your side, and I think we both agreed it's time for Motherland's rifle territories to be returned to her. It's not like your forces could ever match up to ours anyways, Novikov mocked, qu flashing quite the grim. He picked up the paper detailing the Treaty of Riga. His hands trembling as he scanned through the terms, his worst fears being confirmed. Brashich dot palace Kiev Riga, the darn beast wanted it all back. Unacceptable. Every cell in his body screamed as he 
put pen to paper, signing the treaty that would cripple Germany forever. Disgraceful, atrocious, the piece of paper was practically splitting, spitting on the Reich's pride on everything they stood for, and yet they had no other choice. So the curtains closed on this era as the torture of Russia rejoice. From Murmansk to Omelon, the Baltic to the Bering, the motherland emerges from dust once again, however bruised and battered she may be. The tree is a clear message to the world, Russia is back. Oh, don't tell me this changes the focus tree. Please don't tell me the changes in the focus tree. I want to at least read through at least some of these before we have to change through some of these. Operation Bugration, huh? We'll go back to war them too. Oh, I don't know why. What? Uh, no, we didn't get into the. Uh, wait, we didn't get Romania either. What the heck? What? God dang it! I apologize for that, guys. We were too successful. Like, we were gonna win this war very. Actually, oh, can we go back to war them? Uh, We were too successful. We lost less than 50,000 people and killed off, like, <clears throat> just so many millions. He still has a lot of manpower and hold. <clears throat> Excuse me. Only 62 divisions. Holy smokes. A federation reborn. After decades of humiliation, Russia's finally triumphed over the Germans. The sacred city of Moscow, as well as millions of other Russians, have been liberated from German occupation. Feeling such an occasion deserved to be celebrated, President Shukshin has organized an event in the Red Square of Moscow, a large military parade to remember all the wars Russia's ever fought in and to celebrate the nation's triumphs, a day called Victory Day. Declare martial law. Uh, the West is in chaos. Nazi partisans are riding rampant, harassing our forces, and attacking, fighting our liberated brethren on the streets. Before we can begin reconstruction efforts in our newly liberated territories, we must first annihilate these militant partisans and beat those fanatic Nazi settlers into submission as soon as possible. The world is saved. We prevented a full-on nuclear war from occurring, saving billions upon billions of lives and keeping this world of today surviving, at least for now. Who knew threatening people with nukes would get them to stop? Oh, we had fi oh, fifth research slot. Nice. Wow, this is... The longest, one of the longest campaigns I've ever had in TNO, which is fine. Don't get me wrong, that's totally fine. Um, wow. Obviously, this is not our territory, but hopefully we will be uh, be able to integrate it. So I don't mind building a ton of civvies here for right now. So, and we'll check out all the leaders here too. I'm very interested in seeing who's here. Yeah, but like those SP artillery stuff. Holy crap! Those things did some serious work. Millions were just slaughtered, and they didn't even know they were going to die. Like, that was ridiculous. And all that extra armor we stacked, 40 combats are definitely the way to go. The Federation trumps over the Einheit's Pact. In a shocking turn of events, the all-Russian armies overcome the vast German armies. Overwhelmed by Russian air superiority and experimented, experienced soldiers, the Einheit's Pact is formally surrendered to the Russian Federation in hopes of avoiding all-out nuclear war between the two countries. The Federation accepted, signing the Treaty of Riga, which saw the Einheit's Pact hand over the lands of the former Soviet Union. Millions within the Reich's former imperial lands have rejoiced that those winds of change have finally arrived. Chaos on the other hand has erupted in Germany as the people accuse the German government of weakness. Many factions from the SS sympathizers to reformers have begun to battle it out on the streets. While the Wehrmacht attempts to control the situation, only time could tell what the complete repercussions of Russian victory may have on both Europe and the globe. A bright future awaits the Federation. Look at all these people here. Blinka. <clears throat> the Driven Oil Crisis. Line of contrasts, huh? Shroud of General Plan Alst. Oh, boy. Ca 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 Caucasian Reconstruction Zone. Baganov. Victory Day. Jukshin gazed upon the never-ending lines of soldiers from the balcony and felt a few emotions tug at his heartstrings. Pride. Pride of the country had led out of the darkness. Pride for the countless souls that had freed and pride for what he had accomplished in such a short amount of time. A lot of confidence, definitely. This parade, many times larger and grander than the previous one, boasting to the world this was a force that triumphed over the once that invincible Wehrmacht. This was the all-Russian army, the force that liberated millions and crushed a superpower in his palm on a full display, just one of the many miracles in its presidency had brought to the Russian waste. But above all, these emotions hope. Hope for the future. Finally, could he bring the same standard of living most of the Federation enjoyed to the ruins of Moscow? Would anyone dare threaten their sovereignty again? Could Eastern Europe finally take its place and the sun together? 
Chukchin was snapped out of his thoughts by a firm hand on his back. He looked over his shoulder and saw the smiling faces of not only his cabinet, but Pokrushkin as well. His eyebrows raised, but a huge grin on his weathered, beaten face. If look below, Vasily, they're all marching for you a second time, and you've lo you're lost in your thoughts again? I believe you didn't build the Federation up and liberate millions just to fall asleep at the victory parade, no? This should be the proudest moment of your life, so act like it. A strong man yelled at him with the anger, or all the anger he could muster up, but the grin on his face betrayed him. Chukchin turned around slowly, nodding, a toothy grin on his face as well. Whatever you say, old man, look, I still remember what you said that day, no matter the struggles ahead, no matter the enemies we face in the coming storm, we will free your people. But that doesn't apply anymore, does it? The Falcon finished jokingly, much to the President's chagrin. To a better future, to the dreams of a federation. Power of governments? The Spetsnaz can battle the werewolves and cities? Deploy special forces. A Spetsnaz unit is an elite unit who deal with dangerous domestic situations that threaten the Russian people with such a terrorism, bomb threats, and hostage situations. With the Western chaos, it's time to send the best of the best war westward and assist the all Russian army in taking down the Nazi threat in Russia once and for all. We're still not done with this stuff yet. Which is fine, don't get me wrong, it's fine. <sighs> more tanks, God, I love tanks. Um, we have that much. We need we need way more tanks, which, which we'll get. Like, don't get me wrong, we'll get which we'll get. So what is this stuff? Heavy SPAA. Light SPAA. Get more armor. This is a wee bit ahead of time. Anything around here at all? It is 75. It's finally 75, so... Naval stuff. Yeah, I get some air stuff. Why not? This is not a drill. President Shukshim sat before the radio receiver, sweat dripping from his brow. I can't believe I'm going to do this, he muttered. After all we fought for, the sacrifices we've made, has it really come to this? I met Khan Sultan gently placed his hand on his friend's shoulder. Vasily, I understand your trepidation. We all fear, feel fear before any important moment, but the anticipation is always worse than the reality. Take a moment and let your nerves settle. We'll be here for you. Shukshin nodded and let his hands rest on the cool pine wood table behind him. A clock ticked away the seconds before the plunge. Tick tock, tick tock. Shukshin picked up the receiver and began a speech. Citizens of the Russian Federation, he began. This is your president speaking. I'm forced to address you directly by the severity of this current emergency. Please, let's not waste time with useless rhetoric. The situation in Moscow region is at a breaking point. The Third Reich is armed rebels and terrorist groups throughout the liberated territory. They are attacking civilians, robbing, raping, looting, destroying all that we fought to protect. The severity of this emergency cannot be overstated. We I have no desire or to panic or frighten you, but I must be frank. These very are an ex ex existential threat or danger to the peace and prosperity of the Moscow region. As your president, I am required to make difficult decisions on a daily basis. This is perhaps the most difficult of all. He took a deep breath and steered himself to change the history of the Russian Federation forever. As of today, with the consent of the Federal Assembly, I formally declare martial law within the Moscow region. This state of affairs will continue until such a time as these terrorists, terrorists have been rooted out and law and order have been restored. I assure you, he said, this is a temporary measure to defeat anti-Russian elements remaining in our territory. This state will not be extended beyond the Moscow region, nor will it be maintained in per perpetuity. We simply ask for your trust and your cooperation until such time as an emergency has come to an end. We have to come to give you freedom. Let us work for it together. Thank you. President Shukshim returned the receiver to its mount with shaking hands. The speech, perhaps the most important broadcast, broadcast of his life, was over. Well done, Vasily, I met Khan said. Now, we just need to survive the fallout. No, Shukshin said. We need to pray that no tyrant ever uses this president to destroy the Federation's democracy. Citizens, this is only a temporary solution. Please do not shout. Senate the Air Force and power military governments. Although the president does not wish to grant the military more power in the reconstruction zones, if the partisan threat is to be dealt with swiftly and effectively, it will appear that the president has no choice but to do so. With the military governors having more power to deal with the partisans and effectively manage other domestic issues that plague the West, peace and stability can slowly begin to return to these lands of Eastern Europe. Assassinate the Werewolf leadership. So, from the moment we triumph over the Reich, Nazi partisans, otherwise known as Werewolves, have begun an insurgency against the Russian Federation, launching attacks on terror of terror against our citizens and harassing the all-Russian army. Before we can be begin to rebuild Eastern Europe, we must first find out where these terrorists hide and destroy them before they can po cause more harm upon the already hurt peoples of Eastern Europe. The Suzba Bezopasnosti are most efficient in tracking down the leadership of underground terrorist grounds in gourds or grounds, and destroying them from within. That much was proven back when the Federation was faced with a narrow neck threat in the early 1960s. We can send in our best to infiltrate their ranks and annihilate their leadership from within, breaking their organization and their will to resist the Federation. Nice. They have a strike. Oh, boy. Yeah. I, I doubt the mod developers are actually watching this, but if they are, like, I'm loving this. This is awesome. It's one of the one of the best, probably one of the best sub-mods for TNO, which is like one of the an awesome mod in general. Like, yes, please. Um, we can do the raid. I'll do the raid. Or, uh, well, let's expand intelligence presence first. The sources of Bezo Pasnosti has been for years the right hand of the Federation. Their past experiences in rooting out terrorist elements such as the Narodnex would prove invaluable in rooting out Nazi partisan forces that continue to battle forces throughout the former Reichskommissariats and prevent the Federation from rebuilding these lands into any meaningful capacity. 
the raid. Captain Morozov's speciality has always been counterinsurgency. He had a natural ability for smoking out terrorists, partisans, bandits, and everything in between. He had earned his stripes years ago during the Narodnik insurgency, back when the Federation was little more than a city-state, when his unit was appointed to deal with a Verbov problem in Moscow. He knew the drill. Many of his superiors objected to his method of trying to find the ringleader instead of breaking up smaller cells, but Morozov believed that cutting the head off the snake was more, much more efficient than cutting off its tail, as his methods eventually bore fruit. After a while listening or on wiretaps, collecting info from informants and some enhanced interrogation sessions, the Spetsnaz finally located the leader of the Moscow chapter. They tracked the leader to an unassuming house in the outskirts of the city, which belonged to a certain Boris Ignatyev, also known as Garmer, to his web of allies. In the middle of the night, Morozov and his men stormed the lonely house, determined to take Garmer dead or alive, unfortunately for him. For them, the house was seemingly deserted, until one of the Spetsnaz discovered a hidden door be behind a bookcase. It was hastily opened, and the door opened to a staircase that led to a secret basement. The unit went down to the basement to discover a makeshift operations room filled with maps, documents, and weapons. The Spetsnaz discovered a man attempting to use the radio to send messages in German, possibly to warn the of allies that had been discovered. A voice in Russian yelled at him to stop and turn around slowly with his hands up. Instead of complying, the man tried to pull a gun on the Spetsnaz, and within seconds, Garmer was dead. The Spetsnaz and the Russian intelligence agents combed through the documents found and discovered that they had been stumbling upon treasure. The man they killed wasn't named Garmer or Boris, but named Lutz Hoffman, an agent of the German Advair, tasked with organizing the Moscow chapter of the Bevels. With intelligence gathered at Hoffman's HQ, the Russians found out every cell, safe house, supply route, and every planned attack. The next few weeks saw a crackdown of epic proportions, hundreds of German Bevels dead and thousands more taken prisoner. They fell like dominoes, and the Moscow province was finally free from the terror. The end of Moscow is near. Honestly, it'd be really cool someday, and I'm sh I'm sure the developers for the you know sub mod for uh, Second West Russian War. Oh wait, did they, did they do this? Autumn? No, this is definitely uh, this is definitely the end of Borman's uh, focus tree. So I'd be cool to see if Germany would end up dealing with the fallout of losing everything. Which I'm honestly I'm disappointed. Like we we capitulated these guys. We capitulated Romania. Why do you get Romania, man? We capitulated Slovakia. Man, man. Picking up the pieces, huh? We're building Caucasia. I feel like there's going to be an epilogue episode to this because I don't know if we have enough time, but we'll see. After that one, expand intelligence presence here. Yeah. That'll be a good thing to do. But my god, we smashed the living crap out of them so fast. I meant to, but we, honestly. I'm not going to boost it up anymore. Oh, we're pretty good on stuff. I mean, I want to get more, like, tanks and such, but still. Send humanitarian aid? Ah, oh, send in the Air Force. Since the founding of the Federation in the early 60s, or 50s, I should say, we've always prided ourselves on the air capabilities. Through the strength of our Air Force, we've been able to triumph over our enemies from Moscow to Magadan. Now that Lufthansa has been beaten and repelled from the skies of Russia, we can now turn our air capabilities against the partisans. With the Air Force against the partisans, we can find out where these cockroaches hide and bomb them into ash. Strike with the urban outposts? Nice. And then sent some aid. Across the newly liberated West, millions of people were now ruthless and starving. Decades of German mismanagement and the atrocities of the Wehrmacht committed against the innocent people of Eastern Europe throughout the war devastated the population. The Federation must be swift in aiding our Western brothers and sisters through this difficult time in our history and assist them in healing the deep scars left behind the Wehrmacht opposition. Cool. Death from above. Oh, that's all a little bit ahead of time. Can you get any better planes? Oh, we didn't even do air doctrine. Oh, yeah, we did. Sort of. Death from above. Uh, Anna flew through the skies, enjoying the soft hum of the MIG-27 as it soared through the clouds. Anna loved being up here. It was peaceful. There wasn't anyone in the skies to bother her, unlike the chaos on the ground or the roughness of the water, but she wasn't in the skies just for fun of it today. The war with Germany may have ended, but it seemed the Germans who found themselves in the Russian Federation continued to resist. Why do they keep fighting? Can't they see they've lost? Anna asked herself as she made her descent, flying low as she approached her target. The Nazi terrorist group, calling themselves the werewolves, have taken over a farm, killing the owners and turning the place into a fortress. Her job was to help clean up the place, you know, basically. Killing the owners and take over the farm and turn the place into a fortress. Oh no, bomb the place, line the defenses up to Ivanov and the, so the boys could clean up the mess. After a few minutes, the farm was finally in sight. She flagged a switch, composing herself as she activated the comms. Colonel Ivanov, this is uh, Captain Anna. I'm approaching now. I'll tell the boys to get their toys ready. I'll copy that, Captain. Get ready to move when ready. Dmitry Ivanov replied. Anna dove down sharply towards the farm, unloading the payload of explosives. She looked over her shoulders as she watched the flames ascend to the skies. The farmhouse and the barn were turned to pieces. She decided she took to the skies once more. Why are the Germans forcing them to do this? She activated her comms once more, contacting the strike team on the ground. Target hit, Colonel Ivanov. Happy hunting.
Yeah, I like these tanks. Uh, I can get one of these going as well at the same time, it's fine. And since we're here anyways, since we have... Honestly, we don't have that much... We didn't get that much army XP, apparently. Can we have APC um, artillery? So now it's all armor. Nice. Oh, and that's we have such few tanks because I I forgot that we did throw on tanks tank recon here. So Jesus Christ, almost a, we're trying to make everything like at least mechanized. Oh my goodness, awesome! And then the final strike. Across the West, reports have located the bases and leadership of the Nazi partisans that continue to harass their forces. For the Western situation, is stabilizing our military in place and law. A military in place. The time has finally come to launch a final strike against these partisans and end the threat they pose against the innocent once and for all. Nice. Oh, look at this. Order a bombing run. Strike Urban Apples. Sleepless nights. It's been his entire youth work uh, as a worker in Germany factory. A life of terror. Oh, if you want to read about a larger no nuclear stockpile, please go ahead too. It broke producing rifles, a thankless task, providing the means for the Germans to oppress his people. A single slave producing a rifle incorrectly would lead to hours of collective punishment. The soul crushing work, of course, never ended. When the Russian army smashed down the door of the, his factory, he was utterly terrified. Two of the guards had begun liquidating their assets, successfully murdering half of the people Constantine knew in the world. The army only got to them in just as Constantine's overseer turned his attention to him. His life was saved, and for that, he was grateful for, to them. The men then introduced themselves in Russian. For the first seven years, Constantine spoke a language that his masters, no former masters, had tried to force him to forget. Yet. Then one day he left the small apartment he rented. It was better than the conditions in the factory housing, but he still didn't, have to, didn't like to be cooped up all day. As he walked down the street, he saw something odd. He noticed a line of people all standing outside a building. The building declared itself to be a government soup kitchen. Something about it made him smile. The factory grew up and would never provide something as substantial as soup to eat unless you worked for it as if your life depended upon it. As he walked on, he saw two ch children playing soccer in the streets. Soccer. That was something he was introduced to by a soldier that had aided him in rehabilitation. A game that people play to keep themselves occupied. One of the kids kicked the ball a bit skew and it nearly hit a window. Under German rule, they would be punched severely. He kicked the ball back and the child smiled. He made his way down another small bend to a road that had been repaired by the reconstruction crews. He could see the school they had been building. It was going to allow admittance to over 200 individuals or students for free. On the steps of the school, a woman was reading, reading a book to three eager-looking kids. It was grateful that they would not experience the life he had lived. As he looked back at the book she was holding, an idea struck him. He ran back to his home, and in a spark of inspiration, he took a few sheets of paper and pen. He wrote and wrote until he was tired. He looked back at the paper, reading the first few lines. He would need an editor, someone who could make his ramblings and bad grammar read better. But he could make this work. He would write a story about his life in the factory, vicious uh, vilification of the tenements of Nazism, or tenants of Nazism, and what they did to the people of Russia. Maybe one day he would sleep without nightmares. Probably not. Let's be real here, but maybe someday. Project. Oh, it's a failure. Abakan's failure. Oh, we were... Four things were completely successful. One thing was a uh, partial success. And then one was failure. So if you want to about that, please go right ahead. Buy whatever idiot approved this thing. Nice. I just don't want to keep boosting up growth. I don't really need to. Construction spending just costs so much. Pollution controls, acceptable minimum wage, eight hour workday. Child labor is illegal. Oh, that sucks. Low pensions, low unemployment subsidies, security service, higher subsidized education, public health care. Oh boy. Order bombing run? You betcha. So now we can't do anything else, but we gotta do pick up the pieces eventually. Now that the West has been liberated and order has been restored, now comes the time for rebuilding everything that we've lost over these difficult decades that both the Russian people and Europe have long endured. Eastern Europe may lie in tatters as a result of German occupation and the second West-Russian war, but now that Russia stands united and free, we can begin coming together now as one nation begin the long healing process of rebuilding our motherland. The final strike. Hans wiped the sweat from his forehead as he looked down at the map of Eastern Europe. Before the Slavic hordes crawled their way back west and destroyed Hitler's legacy, the werewolves had resisted the enemy since the Treaty of Riga. But it seemed that despite their best efforts, the Untermensch were victorious in the end. Also, if you want to read about the assassinated werewolf leadership, please go right ahead. The shooting outside ceased as loud Russian voices could be heard. It seemed that Hans was the last of his brothers. His breathing became fast as he reached for his HK-4, aiming it at the door. The handle jiggled for a moment before a jet black boot kicked in the door. Hans yelped in fear as the Russian charged in, firing his pistol and dislodging the weapon from Hans' hands. He fell to the ground, his back against the wall as he looked up to the soldier standing over him. Ah, Hans, it's good to finally meet you. You're a hard man to find. I'm sure you know who I am, yes? The soldier asked as he approached the cowering German. Dmitry Ivanov, yes, I know you. You've killed many of us. You're the assassin, Russia's monster, Hans replied. I got my orders, Hans. President Shukshin wants you guys out of, out of his hair by any means necessary, and I don't want to disappoint the president. You're the last one, you're the last one left, Hans. The werewolves die with you. 
Hans looked up at the man that kept hundreds of his fellow werewolves up at night, praying that Russia's monster wouldn't play, pay them a visit. He could feel his hands shaking as he stared in the barrel of the gun. The resistance was over, and everything that the Aryan peoples of Europe had fought to achieve had been undone. The Russians had won. It uh, seems that after everything, you Judeo-Bolshevik puppets have finally won, and we have lost. Just shoot me already. Spare me the shame of my failure. Hans spoke as he closed his eyes. Dmitri pulled the trigger, and Hans collapsed to the ground. The werewolves were finally finished. Eastern Europe could finally heal. A soldier named Bogdan... Belyaev entered the room in AKM in his hands. So what are our orders? The soldiers asked. Torch the place. Leave the bodies. We can... Uh, Vevolf is gone? Great. And now we begin with picking up the pieces. And rebuilding Moscow. Uh, actually, you know, let's get, click on that one in order from here. Uh, for decades, our sacred Moscow has suffered. Under German rule, many of its greatest monuments were left to rot whilst once vibrant Russian communities were reduced to mere ghettos. That case is no longer the case. Russia's back and stronger than ever. With hope in our hearts and our triumph in the war lifting us ever high, it's time to rebuild the third realm and recreate the most glorious city the world has ever seen or had the privilege of seeing. The reconstruction of Moscow begin. Sponsor infrastructure project in the city of Moscow. Third realm. Nice. Picking up the pieces. For the first time in quite a while, the presidential quarters in Novosibirsk were quiet, with most of the staff sleeping deep into the morning. No one could blame them. For the first time in generations, the people of Russia were generally free. Not only were they free, but they faced a German onslaught in the sky and on the ground and came out victorious. Today, Russians every stood. Or Russians stood with their backs straight. They had achieved something that previous states, the Soviets, Americans, and even the British had failed to do. They defeated what was the greatest evil in known history and came out better for it. The euphoria of the previous day of celebration left the staff completely knocked out with their success. Even the various generals drank as if it was their wedding. As the staff of the presidential palace slowly returned for the next day, they started to return to work on the now significant backlog of documents and information. Uh, and now President Shushkin, who also slept in, enjoyed the relative quiet, but he knew he had to return to work. At top of his desk sat several documents giving relatively brief descriptions of the situation across a newly gained territory as well as widespread damage reports and potential avenues towards reconstruction. After reading through each and every hearing about the various suggestions and policy plans, Ahmet Khan, who had been sitting there, quietly spoke up, the old friend. You seem uh, troubled. What's on your mind? The man asked. Shukshin sighed as he set the folder down on his desk and leaned back into his chair. At times, I struggle with the belief that we are where we are at, uh, I meant. It seems like it was only yesterday that I was writing my next novel while you were testing the generation, the next generation of aircraft. Now we're at the helm of a nation that seemingly needs us more than ever, Shukin, Shukshin explained as he rubbed his eyes, his mind exhausted from everything that had happened since becoming a Presidente. Things have changed, that's for sure, but we still have a job to do, Vasily. There are millions of people who still need us, especially after the war. Vasily was silent for a moment before slowly nodding. What are we waiting for, then? We've got work to do. And screw it. Right now, you're going to do that. And all you guys, you're like this. There's four divisions of 40 combo with this division. These, oh, we have two of these divisions? With this. And I don't want them to have that. I want these guys to be like this. So we, we're kind of exchanging things here a little bit. Expand monument reconstruction efforts. Well, let's get some more anti-tank stuff first. We didn't even have this level of anti-tank stuff before we went even to war, so... Nice. Modernized construction equipment. Let's do that one first. The construction equipment of the Western, uh, West Russian Reconstruction Zone, in comparison to the Federation's equipment, is rather outdated with many construction projects taking many more weeks to complete than the mo more modern tools the workers of the Russian Federation currently enjoy. If we wish to rebuild the administrative heart of Muscovy as swiftly as possible, it would be pertinent to support the reconstruction efforts and send some of the Federation's construction equipment to the West Russian Reconstruction Zone. Import modern industrial equipment to accelerate reconstruction efforts. The Federation will sponsor the construction of new industrial complexes in Moscow. As it should. The third realm. This place is a dumb facility. Why can't we just bulldoze everything and start over? Shukin stopped in his tracks and turned towards his old friend, Ahmet Khan Sultan, hero of the Soviet Union, and a skilled pilot stood up slightly shaken at his ally's quick movement. Shukin briefly looked down at the robot at his feet. We just can't tear down centuries of history, Ahmet. Moscow was the whole reason we fought and won this war. That was how we rallied our men. That's how we consoled the widows and crying mothers of those fallen. That was our will to fight, to take back Moscow. We can't forsake our duty to all the people who died along the journey just because it doesn't stop, doesn't look pleasing right now. Rebuilding takes time, Shukin stoically responded. The pair continued to walk, seeing beggars in the, uh, the streets and beleaguered citizens shamble along carrying groceries. Sultan spoke up once again. Why can't we build something new, something exciting? Have you seen those American cities? They have tall office buildings everywhere we can, can support a modern economy. There's more than enough cities where plans like those can be implemented, but the idea of Moscow, and more importantly, the people of Moscow, deserve better than that. What those cities can provide. Think about how many people will be forced from their homes if we let developers come in and buy up all the land and make office space. No. Moscow's prestige needs to be kept and its people put first. Shoot. 
President Shukin responded, I suppose you're right. I'm glad you're taking the current residents of Moscow into consideration, Vasily. Russia should be a place where people of all backgrounds can live in harmony, Sultan enthusiastically said. They peer around in the corner into the Red Square. In the distance, scaffolding covered the domes of St. Basile's Cathedral. The structure will be restored to how it was in the days before the occupation. It will serve as the center of Moscow's skyline and it would signify to the world that Russia was finally back. Putting pieces back together, community by community, and expand monument reconstruction efforts once we, of course, get more flamethrowers. Uh, we'll do that one. Why not? I said. The glorious, the monuments of Moscow is what made our glorious capital city truly shine. So many beautiful sites that once upon a time were a testament to our strength, ingenuity, and intelligence as a nation. Now they lie in ruin, left, in, left to rot, or made into practice targets by the Wehrmacht. Their treatments by the Wehrmacht was horrifying. Centuries of Russian achievements destroyed. The Kremlin, the heart of Moscow, turned into a mere military base for the Wehrmacht. This is absolutely unacceptable. We need to restore our lost history as quickly as possible, no matter the cost. Their values to our people. Uh, the lessons they leave, uh, no matter how dark some may be, are invaluable in ensuring that the mistakes of the past are, of course, never, ever, ever, ever repeated. And I'll finally do the air doctrine. I guess ships? Cruisers? Battleships? Okay, why not? We're going to run out of research to do anyway, so. Uh, unless you are the other type. Yes, you are. Nice. The heart of Russia. A second Moscow, the heart of Russia, has been reconstructed back into its former glory. With a symbol of the strength of Russia now restored, we can turn our attention beyond the borders of the great city of, to the wider West Russian reconstruction zone and address the many problems plaguing the Skad region. Yes. And actually, this time I did cut down spending, so. Construction spending is quite a bit. If we got rid of all construction spending, we would still do pretty okay. Minin and Pozarsky. Basil Shukin stood silently with Alexander Novikov at his side in the Red Square where months ago the Victory Day Parade had been held in celebration of Russia's great victory over the Germans. Shukin looked up to the monument of Minin and Pozarsky, now fully restored by the Federation's finest sculptors. The monument was created in the early 19th century during the Age of Tsars. During the Battle of Moscow in 1941, Minin's face had been blown apart by a stray artillery shell intended for the St. Basile's Cathedral. Following the Great Patriotic War, the monument was made by a firing range by the Wehrmacht to train the recruits to fire weapons. Vasily remembered just how horrible he had been at seeing the bullet holes that painted the, the front of the monument. Vasily smiled at the statues of some of Russia's finest as scars of occupation now gone forever. Vasily looked behind the statue to the cathedral itself, which was covered in scaffolding as Russian constru construction workers continued working tirelessly to restore the iconic building to its former glory. Tell me, Alexander Shukin spoke, getting the general's attention. Do you ever think things will be like be like what they were before? Before the war and the chaos, will Germans and Russians ever greet each other as brothers? Shukin asked as he had places as he places a hand on the smooth stone of the monument. No the cop was silent for a moment as he thought deeply about the president's question. They had finally beaten the Germans and now the motherland was on a long road to recovery, but could Russia truly move on from what the Germans had done to her? Could the scars of the war truly heal? Alexander took a deep breath, looking over towards his ever patient president. One day, perhaps. One day. Reintroduce Russian. Ooh. Support rural Muscovites. It's not bad. I do like that quite a bit. Rebuild Western cities. Ooh, let's do let's report the rural Muscovites first. For decades, Musco Muscovy has been seen by the world as a backwater of Europe. A poor rural subject to the Reich. Any progress made in urbanizing and industrializing these lands were quickly undone during their advance into the Reich's commissariat Muscovy. With Muscovy firmly under our control, our first step should be to urbanize these lands as soon as possible, starting with modernizing the agricultural industries of the West, lifting the peasants out of poverty, and bringing it up to par with the rest of the Russian Federation in Zoria. Shukin opened the door on his desk and said to begin to spend. There were countless charts, figures, facts, numbers, literally hundreds of sheets of paper arguing for his attention. One described the oil output of the central and west Siberia, another pointed to a deficit of precious metals and argued to direct resources from the military to an unspecified project. Another posited the probability of long-term cooperation between the Federation and the OFM, but the item that caught his attention was most was the cover page, a simple drawing of a phoenix, capturing the words Operation Zoria. Gentlemen, I can't make the heads or tails of this, President Shukin, Shukshin said. He pushed the folder towards his visitors. Give me the executive summary. You have five minutes. See, this is why I like him so much, Anatoly Yahontov, chief financial officer of the Tatian Group, said to his shriveled companion. Dude knows what he wants. He turned his back to President Shukshin. His incisors, gleaming with a salesman's smile, were proposing a public-private partnership between your government and our newest subsidiary, Titan Aeronautics. We need investment capital, and we think you'd like to create jobs in greater Moscow area, concerning how much damage the Nazis caused, he said. I'm listening, Shukshin said. Why are you suggesting? Passenger transport planes, jet fighters, are you going to target the domestic market or sell abroad? None of the above, Yahontov said with a smile widening. We want to help start the Federation space program. 
Surprise struck President Shukshin like a boat of lightning. A space program missed uh, Yahon thought we're still reconstructing Moscow, not to mention our other territorial gains. How could I possibly convince the assembly to fund the project? And the palace of the sun shall open and emit glory from its gates in the hot beats once again. Novikov looked around at the rebelled Red Square after weeks of reconstruction. The walls of the mighty Kremlin and everything within had been restored as was the rest of the city of Moscow. When Alexander first arrived in Moscow, it was a wasteland of ruined buildings and poor but hopeful people, all coated in dust and ash as a result of the Battle of Moscow. The city was a mess, and the Kremlin itself was barely standing. Yet for a while, Novikov believed the city could never be rebuilt to what it once was, and yet... As he looked around the Kremlin, noticing some native Muscovites visiting the heart of the city, he couldn't be happier to have been proven wrong. Of course, Moscow was the only first step in the Federation's reconstruction efforts. Much of the Western Russian's uh, great cities such as Smolensk, Tver, Tula, Rezan, Voronezh, and many, uh, many others were still struggling to recover from the decades of damage. There were some under his command who believed trying to restore what remained of Western Russia to its former glory was a futile effort, thinking it would be better to have these achievements of Mother Russia knocked down and rebuilt from scratch. Perhaps once Novikov would have agreed, but after seeing what had been accomplished in Moscow, it couldn't help but scoff at the idea. If the great city of Moscow could reclaim its former glory, then the entirety of Western Russia could easily do the same. Western Russia. She'll find its golden age once more. Soon enough, the memories of what was, 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 shall be restored to how they once were. The decades of damage will be reversed, and a bright new golden dawn shall rise over the West. Novikov chuckled as he looked up at the spires of St. Vasil's Cathedral. When had he been so idealistic? Novikov continued to smile as he began his slow journey back towards, toward, to his office. Perhaps Shukshin's idealism has finally getting to the old general. All secrets see reborn and lively forevermore. And let us conclude with reintroduced Russian. For decades, the Muscovites have been forced to learn and speak the language of the former oppressors. The result of this <clears throat> is a clear language barrier that has created a large divide between Muscovy and the Russian Federation. We do not expect any or expect to overcome this large language barrier at any time soon, but by reintroducing Russian as the official language of the region, we can slowly begin to heal the cultural and linguistic damage done by the Germans. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we will probably conclude this campaign. Thanks for watching, and have a great, great, great rest of your day.